And, and Keith, I think, you know, it's, it's always worth repeating to folks what it is about cancer that's, um, as far as the big four chronic diseases, I call them the four horsemen in my book. There's something about cancer that's particularly damning, which is when you look at the other two chronic diseases that are huge killers, which are cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease, they increase in their severity uh, exponentially as you age. And they don't really become a dominant source of mortality until people are in the seventh and eighth decade of life. And that's not true for cancer. Um, in fact, I, I have a little table in front of me that I had one of our analysts pull together that I think is just, we'll put it in the show notes. It's very powerful, right? So it's sort of looking at people in 10 year increments, so from 25 to 34, 35 to 44, et cetera, all the way up to, you know, north of 85. And it lists the percentage of people in each age category that die in response to cancer. And here's what's interesting is that number peaks in the middle, right? So at 25 to 34, it's 6%. 35 to 44, it's 13 percent. Think about that for a minute, right? That, that is a staggering number for people so young. By the time you get up to 45 to 54, it's 23 percent. 55 to 64, 30 percent. 65 to 74, 31 percent. And then paradoxically, it begins to come down after that because those other diseases are taking off. Another way to look at this is where does cancer rank in cause of death for all causes by decade. And if you go in those same buckets, starting at 25 to 34, it goes from third, third, second, first, first, second, third. In other words, it's mm -hmm. always first to third. There is no other disease that always ranks in the top three cause of death for every age. That's it, full stop, period, it's cancer. And so, you know, it's uh, it's the second leading cause of death overall. We could talk a lot about those stats, but there's nobody who's listening to this podcast whose life has not been affected by cancer. That wouldn't be possible. I, I don't I don't think you could come up with an example of someone who doesn't know someone who's at least had cancer, uh, and it very likely died as a result of it. Yeah, no, that's a good reminder. I mean, you know, one interesting thing, maybe just to um, break that data down a little bit, is you know people. You know, think of pediatric cancers. Um, of course, those are like you know, if, if you, if you, if your life has ever been touched by a kid um, with cancer, there's like just like just almost nothing more jarring. Uh, you know, almost seemingly unjust, if you will, about a child um, being diagnosed with cancer. For children, it, cancer is quite rare. So like it, it really occupies an enormous amount of mind share. But then, as you go into the decades that you were um, summarizing. You know, what's interesting is to reflect on the cancer types, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of lead the way, um, right? So brain tumors, leukemia, uh, melanoma, the, one, you know, this, the most de deadly form of skin cancer, you know, one of the cancer types I mentioned that I've been focused on my career, uh, career long, um, you know, that really jumps up you know, in those 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, those cancer types kind of lead the way in kind of the younger population. Um, and there's some interesting implications there in terms of like, well, what causes those cancers and, and why are, you know, some people, uh, you know, so vulnerable to them. Um, and then, you know, carcinogen induced cancers, well, melanoma, of course, is there's a carcinogen called ultraviolet uh, light. <laughs> That's a carcinogen for skin cancer, including melanoma. Um, but like smoking related cancers, for example, you know, those really start to jump up um, in later decades. Um, and then you've got... Um, so, like, you know, just I mean, everyone is aware of this, but obviously, lung cancer leads the way there. But there's there's a, a smoking footprint for a bunch of other cancer types that people don't think about so much. Head and neck cancer is one that I think is, you know, relatively not top of mind for people. But you know, even when you get to bladder cancer, which you'd think, oh, well, how does smoking cause bladder cancer? But and it's not the sole cause, but it's certainly a, a big contributor. Um, you know, these sort of smoking-related cancers, um, they do they take exposure, right? <laughs> obviously, and and a bit of time. Um, to accumulate their population impact, um, ultimately. And I guess the other, just one other thing that I would kind of throw in there, because I'm sure we're going to talk about, like, you know, the really population prevalent cancers, like, so breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, the big four. Um, so breast cancer and prostate cancer are not related to, well, obviously ultraviolet light or smoking so much. I mean, a little bit of smoking influence on, on breast cancer risk. But um, but there, it's um, you know this really interesting interplay between um, 
you know, these, these uh, hormone receptors, uh, you know, c- kind of being hijacked or co-opted in a way. Um, and you think about the way in which those cancers form, I think it, it best fits your, um, you know, kind of this age, like, you know, cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease, I would argue, like, there's, there's something at play there that's similar to these hormone-driven cancers, which are very age-related. So breast cancer and prostate cancer really pick up in those later decades of age. Um, so it's just kind of interesting to reflect on, you know, kind of the how and why different cancers kind of feature um, in those uh, different decades of age. And that, that has tons of ramifications in terms of how we think about screening, which I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah, for sure. So let's add a little more color to that, Keith. So you mentioned the big four, right? So uh, lung being number one. I, I think a breast and prostate is kind of number two and colorectal number four. And then if you add a fifth in pancreatic, you now yeah. account for a little over 50% of all cancer deaths. So, yeah. you know, we'll talk about incidence, but we're going to talk about mortality. And at the end of the day, just five cancers account for half, a little over half of all cancer death in the United States. 